All right. Hopefully you checked out the first one with um, Jedi Master Luke. So now here we are with C, Sith Eternal Emperor. So over here it says Sith Eternal Emperor, Emperor, Galactic Legend, Dark Side, Attacker, Leader, Sith. Highlights. Ultimate, powerful ability that transforms Palpatine into a devastating attacker. New to buff, Deceived, fuels his ultimate and disrupts enemies. Doubles his own mastery through his ultimate. Hmm. Also affects other dark side allies if he is leader. New effect, Linked, weakens enemies while bolstering his own power. Yeah, sounds like, um... See, Luke was all about boosting up his teammates and stuff, making the whole team more uh, uh, beefy and, and bionic and luscious. I have a feeling, because it's Palpatine, he's very self-centered, so it's going to be all about boof boosting himself up. And that's how it sounds so far. Let's see what they say. Synergy, Darth Sion, Darth Malak, Sith Empire Trooper, Sith Assassin. Sith Assassin sucks. Why would you want to... What? In Bastilla Sean Fallen. Hmm. Malik, though, he's beefy. I can see that one. It's funny because. Scion used to be pretty beefy, and then Malik came out and it was like, who needs Scion? And that, that pause I had there was just because I was thinking, Scion almost looks like he could be Malik, but with a shirt on, <laughs> a half a cape, and like a, a, a some headgear. I mean, look at them. They're almost like. The same body style. He's even got a little bit of red on his chest. Like it's some of the shirt that... <laughs> Anyways. Hi, whole table heroes. The story of the Star Wars trilogy is the story of Palpatine rising to power and quest for eternal life. Today's Dev Insight takes a deeper look at the, at the new galactic legend. Sith Eternal Emperor. Palpatine's strongest form the universe has ever seen. Only it's a clone, so it's not really Palpatine. <laughs> the basics. Sith Eternal Emperor is an attacker that focuses on dealing tons of damage at the expense of whoever is in his way. Yeah, that sounds about right. In lore and on the battlefield, Palpatine is initially hiding in the background, manipulating his enemies and waiting for the right moment to strike. Yeah, that's pretty true again. Sith Eternal Emperor needs a squad built around him specifically. We recommend at least a few tanks in your squad in order for Palpatine to survive long enough to reach his ultimate. Huh. So that makes it sound like his ultimate takes a while to get to, which... If you're going up against the C team, could actually work in your benefit, you know what I mean? You could take possibly take him out before he gets to his ultimate. Hmm. Where again, Luke, his sounded like you want to bang it out as quickly as possible. <laughs> hmm. Sith Eternal Emperor, in his pre-transformed state, allows you to pre prepare the battlefield for when you switch on the pain and activate his ultimate ability. Activating his ultimate changes Palpatine from a supporting role to a very strong attacker. Supporting role? It never said supporting, it just says attacker. But, okay. Um, no. This does not change... This does... Wait. This does not to change... <laughs> okay. His Relic Mastery stats. What? Hold on. Let me try this one more time. No. This does not to change his Relic Mastery stats. Sith Eternal Emperor stays an attacker. Um, okay. <laughs> his ultimate. I am all the Sith. Greatly ramps up his power. And ideally, you would have, you would activate it when most of the enemy squad has the Deceived buff. Makes sense. Yeah. Unique attributes. There are two ways to charge Sith Eternal Emperor's ultimate detailed below. Deceive is a central part of keeping Sith Eternal Emperor alive and it changes his ultimate. Oh, and it charges the, his ultimate, my bad. A deceived enemy can't target Palpatine, which allows him to hide from more problematic characters in the enemy squad. Yeah, that's that could be good. You deceive someone that's really strong and now you know that you're not going to get hit by them. Hmm could work pretty well with proper strategy. Sith Eternal Emperor gains additional mastery whenever a deceived enemy uses an ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. The unique, Sow Discord, allows Deceive to spread to the weakest enemy whenever they use an ability. Deceive can continue to spread after Sith Eternal Emperor transforms into his ultimate form. Huh. 
Unraveled Destiny. This ability links two characters together, and both units will lose protection whenever one of them takes a turn. Sith Eternal Emperor steals a portion of the protection lost. Wait. Is this on the opposing team, or... Because if that's your allies, that's a terrible move. <laughs> Linked also causes units to deal less damage and prevents critical hits. His leader ability, Sith Eternal, allows linked enemies to fuel his ultimate. That's gotta be enemies, right? There's no... That would be such a terrible move. If this was happening to your own teammates, you'd be killing your team. <laughs> that would be stupid. Huh. Upon transformation, Sith Eternal Emperor is granted two new abilities, a new basic and a very strong special. Power! Unlimited power! He gets two moves when he transforms? That makes me think of um, uh, Mandalorian. When once he gets his uh, payout activated, that's when he gets Disintegrate. Only now this P Papa Palp over here gets two moves. Power, unlimited power, and a new basic. This special has the potential to wreck the whole enemy team and put you in a very good position to win the battle. What the heck? So it's just like a super huge power move? <laughs> When Sith Eternal Emperor uses POWER, UNLIMITED POWER, he immediately destroys linked units, excluding raid bosses and galactic legends. Immediately destroyed linked units. Yeah, so it is opposing. So basically, if you could link the whole team, you would take them out with nothing. Ah. Uh, that. Hmm. Okay. Inspiration. As the Emperor of the Sith Eternal and the final order. We wanted to make sure the character represented the history of the Sith as well as the machinations he orchestrated to take over the galaxy on more than one occasion. Yep, like in the prequel trilogy, the, the original trilogy, and then he was trying again in the sequel trilogy. Palpatine was a puppet, uh, Palpatine was a puppet master. Too many Ps there. Only becoming a tangible threat in the final movie of each of the trilogies in the Skywalker saga. Mm. Yeah, that's true, huh? I never thought of that before. <laughs> Episode 3 is when he went from, you know, uh, Senator Palpatine to Darth Sidious. Episode 6 is when he had the showdown with Luke and Vader, and then he was using his Force Lightning on Luke. And Episode 9 was when, you know, he was in the Sith place and showed off... Or showed down between uh, Ray and Kylo. I never thought of that before. Huh. Anyways, this is where the idea of deceived came from. Setting the pieces in place so that in the end everything will go as you have foreseen it. You hope. The linked ability allows us to tie the fates of two characters together, much like Ray and Kylo Ren's destinies. Yeah, so that's funny though. You can tie like random <laughs> characters together put like two what would you actually go up against well you'd be going up against all good stuff so i guess they probably would have linked destinies anyways but you could come up with some funny teams the mechanical life support he is initially bound to is called an almond harness we wanted to make sure that this aspect of the character is represented in the unit and while it's faded in the battle view you can get a better view of it in the character screen the event to unlock Sith Eternal Emperor takes you all the way back to when Mace Windu and the Jedi came to arrest him and he declared the memorable line of, I am the Senate. Not yet you aren't. Strategy tips. Control who can attack Palpatine with Deceive and use Unravel Destiny to link two other units and slow down the enemy squad's biggest threats. Deceive the most powerful units with abilities that directly target units. Sith Eternal Emperor can still be damaged and affected by AoE attacks. Hmm. Link the fastest character on the enemy squad to help damage another enemy as much as possible. Every time the fast enemy takes a turn, they will be damaging their ally, which can add up quickly. It could be. Or you want to link them to the weakest, if you can tell based on the health. That way then they'll basically kill them for you. <laughs> You may want you may even want to link an enemy galactic legend, even though they won't be destroyed when Sith Eternal Emperor uses power on the mad power. 
as their very high speed will quickly bring down another unit. Yeah, that's an idea too. Your strategy should revolve around protecting Palpatine until he can use his ultimate, even if it means a 3 to 4 tank team. Jeez. Four tanks? That would mean everybody's a tank and then him, just hanging out. <laughs> Sith Eternal Emperor, when, his, when in his ultimate form, restored, can almost take on an entire squad by himself. I mean, it does sound that way based on what they're saying. You know, you link a couple enemies and blah blah blah, and then he does this huge move and boom, bam, boom, that, bye. I just wiped you all out. <laughs> Squad suggestions. Tanks are very important to the squad. Yep, you've said that multiple times now. We would even recommend running three or four tanks just to ensure Sith Eternal Emperor can reach his ultimate. Sith work particularly well under his leader ability as they also gain mastery whenever a deceived or linked enemy uses an ability. Okay. Frequently asked questions. His granted special number one, power, unlimited power, does not start on cooldown and should be used as soon as he transforms. 10% mastery stacking from deceived and linked enemies only lasts until the end of encounter, not end of battle. End of encounter. Okay. 10% stack. Hmm. I can't think of what that means offhand, actually. Mastery stacking from deceived. So that means each turn it basically resets, huh? That's weird. Sith Eternal Emperor loses two abilities when the. When he ultimates deception and so be and so be it jedi and then gains revitalized shock and power unlimited power oh okay so he gets those two moves but it's not really like mandalorian like i thought that it's just trades it gets rid of deception for revitalized shock and then gets rid of uh, rid of so be it jedi for power unlimited power huh well i gotta say sith eternal palpatine is much easier to get and the characters that you need for Sith Eternal Palpatine are... Uh, I can't say they're better, but they're definitely much easier to get. Much easier to get. However, I have to say Luke is probably way more impressive. The first batch, Kylo, was much more impressive. And the characters that he needed were much better. Like, Rey is like, why would you bother going for her? This time around, getting Luke is a pain in the butt with what he needs, but... He's definitely worth it, at least from what it sounds like from his kit. His kit sounded awesome, or at least this article. We haven't looked at Palpatine's kit in depth yet, but it sounds like Palpatine's all about himself. Luke was awesome because he's all about the team. He's all about making the team better, and it really does boost the team insanely. Where Palpatine just working on himself, yeah, okay, when he gets to his ultimate, he can wipe out the whole entire enemy team like nothing, which is cool, but it sounds like... You really got to work hard at strategizing to make sure that he lasts that long and then gets that hit that he needs. And, hmm. Well, let's go check out his kit. All right. So the Joe Palpatine. He looks pretty dumb with this thing hanging on him. <laughs> they said it was going to be there, but it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> Anyways, <coughs> are you serious? This is that's his relic, too. This thing is his relic. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> Alright, so as we know, Galactic Legend Dark Side Attacker Leader Sith. I am all the Sith. Requires 100% ultimate charge to activate. 100. That's gonna be all the way. Kylo and Ray didn't need 100. They needed, what, 60? Hmm. Anyways, ultimate charge. Sith Eternal Emperor gains 2% ultimate charge whenever a deceived enemy uses an ability. Okay. Any ability? Because I could actually power this up really easily then as long as a lot of characters are deceived you know if sith eternal emperor, emperor is the leader he also gains eight percent ultimate charge whenever a linked enemy uses an ability is a leader is the leader he also gains eight percent ultimate charge huh yeah so this could really stack up pretty easily then sith eternal emperor doubles his current mastery and transforms into sith eternal emperor restored if he is in the leader and, uh, wait, if he is in the leader, all of the dark side allies double their current mastery. Remove deceived from all deceived enemies and inflict deceived until the end of the encounter on those enemies. What? Remove deceived from all deceived enemies and then inflict deceived again? What's the point of that then? What's the point of that? And inflict deceived until the end of encounter on those enemies, which can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. 
What is the point of that? Why would you remove deceived from all deceived enemies and then put it back on? Just leave it then. Like, what? <laughs> That's so stupid. When Sith Eternal Emperor transforms, he loses the abilities deceived and so be it, Jedi, and gains two new, two new abilities. Basic, Revitalize Shock. Deals special damage to target enemy and inflicts shock for two turns, which can't be copied or dispelled. This attack deals 150% more damage to deceived light side enemies. If the target was already deceived, reduce the cooldown of power and limited power by one for each deceived enemy. This attack cannot be evaded. That's not bad. Special, power unlimited power. Instantly defeat linked enemies and, spe and deal special damage to all enemies. Then dispel all buffs on deceived enemies and deal special damage to them. Enemies defeated by this ability can't be revived. This attack can't be evaded. Wow, that's <laughs> that's pretty juicy. Instantly defeat linked enemies. So that's like two gone right away. Boom, boom. And deal special damage to all enemies. Then dispel all buffs on all deceived enemies and deal special damage to them. So if everybody was deceived and had a lot of buffs, I feel like this move would do insane damage to them. And the best part is, if you have this character, the defeated enemies can't be revived. So in that time, in that type of, uh, with that move, Jolie Bender wouldn't matter. It's like, oh, who are you going to revive, huh? huh? Ewok Elder, who are you going to revive, huh? huh? Ooh, Nice Sisters. Man, Nice Sisters would be so easy to take out with him. Not like they're a challenge, but you know, they're slightly a pain in the butt. But with him, it's like, yeah, <laughs> bye. Hmm. <laughs> Deception. Deal special damage to target enemy. If that target wasn't deceived, they become deceived for one turn, which can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. This ability can't be countered. What? So this move does damage and gives deceived, which can't be countered or resisted. So it's guaranteed. Wow, that's pretty cool. Deceived. Can't target Sith Eternal Emperor during their turn if another Sith enemy is active. When an, an, when an ability is used, Sith Eternal Emperor gains 2% ultimate charge. Yeah, so <laughs> you put damage on them. You, um, and you put this buff on them, which can't be resisted. They also can't counter, and then they can't go after you. <laughs> it's like a reverse taunt. And that's stage one. Stage two says... Sith Eternal Emperor gains speed up for two turns. Eh, no big deal. And then the third, all the way, is target enemies to see for two turns increase to three turns if they're a Jedi. Ooh. So this is a counter to, um... Uh, Jedi... Ma uh, yeah, Jedi Master Luke. Oh. Huh. So be it, Jedi. Deal special damage to target enemy and call all other dark side allies to assist. It just calls dark side allies in general. That's not even Sith. That's pretty beefy. Jedi allies defeated this turn can't be revived. Oof. This is going to make every single Jedi Knight Revan team so simple now. <laughs> I mean, granted, this is a Galactic Legend, so getting him isn't simple. But I'm just saying, like, oh my word, Je Jedi... Master, or what am I saying? Jedi Knight Revan is going to be nothing now. It's going to be like, boom, boom, bye. See ya. Simple, 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 done. <laughs> Dark side allies deal 10% more damage for each deceived en uh, enemy. And then all the way boofed up, boosted up. I just keep saying boofed because I'm thinking boosted and beefed. And I'm thinking both these words together at the same time. So it comes out as boofed. Can we just use boofed? Let's just use boofed. <laughs> you know what that means. Boofed. Oh, my word. Boosted and beefed. That's what boofed is, okay? So now, uh, tier 3 says, Dark side allies recover 50% protection. That's not bad. It's only protection, though. So you could have, like, one health, but a full bar in protection. It doesn't really matter. Especially if they deal true damage. Bam, bam, boom. Die. Bye. Unravel Destiny. Remove linked from all enemies. Then target enemy becomes linked until a linked enemy is defeated or until the end of encounter. What? Another one where it tells you to remove something just to put it right back. Remove linked from all enemies, then target enemy becomes linked. Really? Until a linked enemy is defeated or until the end of encounter. 
Sith Eternal Emperor gains the granted ability Entwined Fate and takes a bonus turn. During this bonus turn, Sith Eternal Emperor may use only Entwined Fate, can't be ability blocked, ignores taunt effects, and may not target a linked character. Linked. This character is linked. <laughs> oh, great description. Entwined Fate. Target enemy becomes linked. This ability is removed and can't be used again until Unraveled Destiny is used. What? Uh, tier 2. Dark side allies gain retribution for 3 turns. Beefed all the way. Dark side tank allies gain taunt for 2 turns. So you've got a team of 4. They're all taunting though, so that's kind of stupid. It's like when it's on auto and the whole tank team's like, oh, I can taunt, I can taunt, I can taunt. And it's like, well, you guys are dumb. You're not serving any purpose, all taunting. Yeah, that move I didn't quite understand. I don't know how to break it down. Sith Eternal, the leader. Dark side allies have plus 25 percent mastery plus 30 percent potency and plus 20 speed doubled for sith allies 50 mastery 60 potency and 40 speed uh, 40 speed that's what luke did also whenever a linked enemy uses an ability sith eternal emperor gains eight percent ultimate charge sith allies ignore defense when targeting a jedi enemy oh my word yeah, Sith Eternal Emperor. Sith Eternal Emperor is set up to destroy Sith. Gee, I mean Jedi. Let's see, beefed up to the stage two. Whenever a Sith ally is defeated, dispel all debuffs on other Sith allies, and they recover 100% health and protection. And protection. That's just like a better version of um, Qui Gon's ability. <laughs> Sith allies can't be revived. Ugh, that's not very good, though. Beefed up all the way. Whenever a deceived or linked enemy uses an ability, Sith Eternal Emperor gains 10% mastery, stacking until the end of encounter, and other Sith allies gain half that amount. 5%? Yeah, that's kind of dumb. 1 and 2 is where it's at, though. Hmm. Let's see, now we got so this good. Sith Eternal Emperor is immune to taunt effects. What's that mean? He ignores taunts or he can't taunt? Hmm. And turn meter reduction. Oh, that's good. Deceived enemies can't counterattack. And deceived rebel and Jedi enemies can't gain bonus turn meter. This one's picking on rebels, too. <laughs> Jeez. At the start of Sith Eternal Emperor's turn, if no enemies are deceived, the weakest light side enemy becomes deceived for two turns. Deceived can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. At the start of each linked enemy's turn, linked enemies lose 20% max protection. Quadrupled for Jedi? Linked enemies lose 80% max protection if you're a Jedi. And Sith Eternal Emperor gains 25% of the amount lost. Oh my word, so he began a lot from Jedi. Linked raid bosses instead gain exposed for two turns, which can't be resisted. Man, Jedi... Oh, man. See, Jedi Luke... Jedi Master Luke is all about boosting up the team, but man... Palpatine is heavily about himself, but he is very anti-Jedi. Oh, my word. I feel like a Jedi team would do nothing up against a C team. <laughs> Man, he is just ripping them apart. <laughs> what is stage two? Linked enemies can't be critically hit. Or can't critical hit, I mean. Can't critically hit. And the damage they deal is decreased by 25%. Except for Galactic Legends. So they can't critically hit and they're weaker on top of that. Okay, it's kind of, yeah, not that special. All the way boosted. Whenever a deceived enemy uses an ability, their weakest ally without deceived becomes deceived for the max duration Sith Eternal Emperor could inflict on them. Limit once per turn. And Sith Eternal Emperor recovers 2% protection. Um, that doesn't sound that juicy either. It sounds juicy just on the basic. The things it adds on are just like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, what do we got going on down here on Galactic Legend? I think it's all the, it's the same on all of them, right? 
This unit takes reduced damage from percent health damage effects and massive damage effects. They take massive damage from destroy effects. Wait, what? They take massive damage from destroy effects? Excludes raid bosses. What's a destroy effect? What does that mean? And massive damage effects? Is that like annihilate? Because I don't think annihilate works on Galactic Legends, right? Well, what's the next stage? This unit is immune to stun effects. Okay, that's kind of boring. And the next one, this unit has plus 10% max health and max protection per relic amplifier, and they, the damage they receive is decreased by 30. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same as um, Luke. I guess it's the same as everybody. I don't know. Huh. Well, there it is for him. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. I have to say, Luke's probably better. Although this, Luke's, hold on. Luke's better in general, as he boosts up a Jedi team. But, I think Sith Eternal Emperor is insane versus Jedi, though. He is going to destroy Jedi like nobody's business. <laughs> Man. He's also a lot easier to get, though. But Luke is actually way better. Huh. Well, guess that's it. So, uh, till next time, I said see ya.